So welcome to an overview of Make the Phone Ring Again Live. This is actually uh, come about from 20 plus years of mastering the database, mastering uh, the real estate business that I've put together to sell 100 homes a year every year for the past 20 years. I've sold over 2,500 homes uh, in my career and still selling around 100 homes a year. And the way I did this was um, putting my business on autopilot. Um, you know, I didn't figure this out overnight. I have followed top agents from around the country, seeing what they did in their business to make their business successful. Um, I have gone to a lot of training, seminars, all that kind of stuff. And Basically, the big difference that I've seen uh, from agents that are struggling with their business and their business isn't quite where they want it to be, it's about implementing systems to run your business so it's not completely dependent upon you. Here's some of the things I've done. The most recent one that you're going to hear a lot about next month is that I co-authored E-Myth Real Estate Agent with Michael Gerber. Um, if you have the E-Myth Real Estate book on your bookshelf somewhere, you need to grab that thing down and read it again before this book launches. Um, basically, Michael Gerber talked about the E-Myth, why small businesses don't work and what to do about it. And I just wrote E-Myth Real Estate Agent with Michael, why most real estate businesses don't work and what to do about it. And if you saw the post, it's really more about why your real estate business isn't working as easily and solidly and predictably and consistently as you wanted it to. And that's what I basically got really frustrated with when I got into real estate 26 years ago. So they didn't teach us what we needed to know to run a successful business. You'll see some other things on there. Um, I mean, I'm one of John Maxwell's coaching founding members of his coaching company. So I've spent three days with John Maxwell um, on his leadership um, topics and books. Um, Featured on HGTV, that's the fun one. Uh, I was on the show, My House is Worth What? And basically it was just submitting a, a, DV, a DVD sample of the show and submitted it to the show and got some national coverage. I love uh, free marketing. And then uh, also we won uh, Realtor.com's uh, national marketing contest, Who's Gonna Make It Big? That was probably uh, my most fun one because I won a five carat diamond. Woohoo! Fun stuff. All right. So let's get into the stuff right away, though. I just want to cover what we're going to, what type of things we're going to be coming in our upcoming event, uh, September 19th through the 20th. Uh, we've got a live, I'm taking this live in Kansas City. Uh, I don't know if you're close, you can drive, um, pay for the extra airfare, find a deal on airfare, and you can get to Kansas City. I'll tell you more about the event after this. But I'm going to tell you what we're going to cover in this session and just know that in two days, we are basically going to be franchising your business, going over system after system after system. It, it'll probably be pretty darn close to 100 systems that run your business. And it's everything that I cover in the E-Myth Real Estate book. However, in the two day live event, we're actually going to create those uh, those campaigns and action plans and systems to run your business. So here's a few things that we're gonna cover in this session. You need to undo what you've been taught to this point in real estate. I And I'm talking to every single person on this session, whether you've been in real estate 20 years, uh, 30 years, 40 years, or you just got into real estate and you haven't been taught anything yet. You need to undo what we've been taught in real estate. We're gonna cover the why, why, why you do this to build it into an actual business. If you um, have uh, heard of um, the cash flow quadrant and a business that runs itself without you there um, is an entrepreneur. Uh, Michael Gerber covers it in the E-Myth, which if you haven't gotten the E-Myth book off your shelf yet, look for it, grab it and pull it down. And he'll basically tell you uh, that if your business requires you to be there, it's not really a business yet. It's it's a job. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second. Um, but he just recently wrote the book uh, Beyond the E-Myth, 
where it's going from a company of one to a company of 1,000. And he made a really good point on this why part, building your business like a business, is that if your business doesn't run while you're gone, if you could leave your business for a year and come back and it's thriving, that's a business. If you have to be involved somewhere, it's not a, quite a business yet. It's a company. It doesn't matter whether you have 10 employees, two employees, 50 employees. If you have to show up, it's not a business. of. It's going from a company of one to a company of 1,000. You're still a company of one if you have to show up. The where, where do you start? I mean, we're going to, there's so much stuff coming at us in real estate. Um, it's, it's really focusing on where do I start to really get my business set up like a business, who you're going to need to get it done and how you're going to manage it all. Because there's so much that I can, I will cover in this two day event that you got to just have some direction and a path on what that's going to look like. So first of all, I have to undo everything that you've been taught. And to undo that, I'm going to refer back to the E-Myth and the E-Myth real estate agent. In this book, Michael Gerber takes a chapter and talks about the E-Myth principles. And then I give you the chapter right behind that topic on the real estate version of it and how I applied that book, the entire E-Myth book into my real estate business and put it on auto autopilot. So I'm going to cover a couple of things out of E-Myth right now just to kind of get you in the right mindset because you may or may not have read the book recently and you definitely will want to pull it off your bookshelf and read it again. Um, so applying the E-Myth principles to your real estate business. First of all, in E-Myth, Michael talks about the three personalities of all businesses. You got the entrepreneur, the visionary, the technician and the manager. And most of us are stuck in this technician role. We're the doer. That's we do stuff to get paid. And most real estate agents never get really out of this technician role. The ideal thing is to bring your technician, your entrepreneur and your manager to an even keel where you're running all three of those at the same time, saying simultaneously to get it to a business. But the manager is the enabler. He's one tracking the profit. The technician is the doer. You're working for that paycheck and the visionary is the equity in your business. And we may get a vision once in a while and we may look at our profit once in a while or like our checkbook balance just to see if we have any profit. If there was more uh, check at the end of the month than there was bills. Right. So those things can pop in there. But day to day, we're really running in that technician mode. And the other thing that I really focused on in my business uh, were the three core focus points of the E-Myth. And that is the client fulfillment system, the lead capture system, and the lead conversion system. And I'll be honest with you, what I did was I looked at my lead capture system and I just needed to convert more leads. I had plenty of leads coming in. That wasn't the issue. It was getting those leads converted. And once you've got a conversion system in place that every single person you meet every single day gets onto some kind of follow up system so that you stay in touch with them, then you can then you'll really need a client fulfillment system because you'll be closing 100 deals a year or, you know, 10 deals a month. And you really need a system to manage all of those contracts that are coming through. So the biggest thing here on the conversion system was that I knew every single person was moving. Every The average person moves every five to seven years. So if you have 100 people that you've met in the past you know, month or two months, all 100 of them are moving in the next five to seven years. So by keeping them all, capturing them all into your system and then staying in touch with them, you're gonna actually build a pipeline of business that just keeps coming and is predictable. So that's what the two days is about, is showing those systems. So here's some core E-Myth principles. The law of objectivization. View your business as separate from you, like a product, so you'll be able to reinvent it. It is about taking a step outside of your business and looking at it objectively. This is something that real estate agents, you know, really, if you could step away from your business for a minute, just step outside of it and look at it and see what it's doing, see what it's not doing. What are your frustrations? I mean, do you have tons of leads coming in and they're just not being followed up with or converted in time? Do you have a team that you're managing? 
what's happening with them? Are they are they achieving their goals and their dreams and making more money than they ever imagined since they've come to work for you? Or is everybody struggling to make the next dollar? Everybody struggling to close the next deal? Is everyone closing one or two deals a month? Guys, it doesn't take that much time to close one or two trans real estate transactions a month, yet agents can spend 60 to 70 hours a week on real estate and closing one or two or three deals a month. When you back up and step outside of your business and look at it, it, it doesn't make sense that it's, it's taking this long. Systemization. View your business as an integrated system. The system does the work and the people run the system. This is the first thing I'm going to tear into and undo from everything that you've learned. The real estate industry is completely stuck on this hiring talent, hiring talented people. Get people that will show up and do the work. Guys, the average person is 80% of the population, the 80-20 rule. We're going to talk about that when it comes up here in a second. But the 80-20 rule, 20% 20 of the real estate agents are doing 80% of the results. 80% of the agents are getting 20% of the results. If you totally build a people-run business, then you've got to find the 20% and the 20% are only okay, okay? 5% are doing 95% of the business. So for you to find the 5% that will grow your business by 95%, you need to hire and fire 95 people out of 100 people to find the 5%. That is a long, hard, grueling process. And the high, there's hiring systems and firing systems and all that stuff out there, but you're gonna have to hire 80 people to fire 80 people that aren't gonna work, to find the 20 people that will actually be the ones that'll do the work. You kind of get what I'm saying? So when you create a system like a McDonald's, for example, let's just take that as, as simple as it is. Anybody can start at McDonald's tomorrow and you're gonna get the same burger you've always gotten at McDonald's every time you go. The system does the work that people run the system. So anybody can run that system. Here's some business myths. The technician, and this is where most of us get stuck is in these technician roles. They, a technician envisioned the business in its parts, constructed from the bottom up based on technical tasks. This is getting a contract, writing the contract, making sure the contract gets turned in, making sure the schedule, the closing is scheduled. And you might even have an assistant or something helping you set some of this stuff up. But again, it's the business is all in parts all over the place. Who Where's the systems that bring it all together and take it from beginning to end to make sure it runs smoothly? So the e-myth reality is envision your business in its entirety from which it is derived from which it is derived its parts. What's important is the business as a whole, how it looks, how it acts, how it does what it's intended to do. Now, have you sat back and looked at all your sales in the past 12 months? Is your business doing what it intended to do? What was it intended to do? Was it to generate you a commission check? Well, that's a technician working for a paycheck. Or was it to deliver a Disney-like experience for your client and everything was smooth and everybody involved in the transaction from the title company to the lender to the co-op agent to everyone who touched any piece of that business had the most pleasant experience every single time you closed a deal? Is your business delivering a crazy awesome experience for your clients and for everyone that it touches? Here's some more business myths. The technician is a fragmented vision of the world where the customer satisfaction represents a series of problems to solve with price, features, availability, and support. This is a total description of 99.9% .9 of all real estate businesses. We are problem solvers. We move fast. We come up with solutions when things pop up. The e-myth reality is it's an integrated vision of the world where the customer need is an opportunity to make meaning. In other words, do you find yourself in reactive mode all the time or can you predict that uh, an awesome experience every single time for that customer that they are going to go out and tell the world you have got to use this real estate agent? More business myths that are talked about in the e-myth mastery is the future is modeled after the present day world, the model of past experience and the model of getting paid for effort 
or results. This is what real estate agents do. We look at where we are right now and we're trying to build our business from where we are. What worked last year? What didn't work? What are we going to do better this year? You're building from where you are to where you want to go. The E-Myth reality is the present day world is modeled after a vision of a better way, one that will stand out with customers from all the rest in the past and give the joy and satisfaction of success. What this is, is like Disneyland. Walt Disney created Disneyland before it existed. He didn't start with a, a small park with a roller coaster and a Ferris wheel, and then he added something, and then he added something, and then he added something. You might even see that in parks today where they just add a new ride every year, and it's like, woohoo, eventually um, the new ride doesn't get you all excited. You've already been on all those rides. You're not going to the park nearly as much as you used to when it was new and you hadn't been on everything. So what is that reality of your business that if you created the ultimate business, not from where you are, but from where you like just write it out on paper, dream up the most incredible real estate business, and then look at where you are and go towards that versus building from where you are. So we're gonna talk about all that stuff in the two day, uh, make the phone ring again live, the, just understanding those concepts. So. Let's just talk about what some of those actual things will be that we'll cover in the event. Um, we're all busy. We've got lots of stuff to do. We have to schedule appraisals, put open house signs out, get our listing paperwork ready, uh, attend the closing, coordinate inspections. You got to post your properties on social media. You got to, there's just a ton of stuff going on. So, yes, we are busy. And it doesn't even matter if you have a huge team. Everybody on your team is busy doing all these different things and how are they coordinated and how are they connected? and How do you make sure they happen? Because one of the things that we're going to talk about coming up is developing your perfect process and you will see just how much is actually slipping through the cracks and how crazy everybody's running around. If you were closing 200 transactions this year, closing 20 deals a month or even 30 deals a month if you're closing 20 now, if you doubled your volume from where you are right now, would your staff go insane? And if so, then it's probably more people driving your business than systems driving your business, okay? So what one of the things I talk about is building a 20 lane highway. The cool thing in real estate is that we can build a 20 lane highway, a 40 lane highway, an 80 lane highway from day one. Kind of goes back to what I just said earlier, what does the ultimate business look like? How many transactions are you closing? How many people are working with you? What are the people working with you accomplishing in their life? Um, what, in, what joy are they getting every time there's a closed transaction? Um, everything. The ultimate goal is a great client experience. And in the two-day Make the Phone Ring Again live event on September 19th and 20th, in Kansas City, we're going to talk about how everyone is your client. The people that work with you, the people involved in the real estate transaction, everyone is your client. And in E-Myth, Michael also talks about if your business isn't growing, it's dying. Guys, I have seen this time and time again where a business isn't growing. That's feeding your database every single day. I made a comment earlier. Every single person that Every single person on your team meets and comes in contact with and has two-way conversations in the world. We're talking about if it's you all by yourself, every single person you meet today is moving. Will you sell real estate? That's what you do. So you need to capture every single person you meet from this day forward and get them into your system and follow up with them for the next five to seven years so you can have that automatic deal. Can you imagine if you did that every single day? five people a day added to your database every day, taking weekends off, you could add five people a day is 100 people, or 25 people a week is 100 people a month, is 1,200 people in a year. Times 10 years is 12,000 people that you've connected with, not cold call leads, not this 1% conversion rate. This is talking about 100% conversion rate with every single person you connect with from today forward. So if you add to your database every single day, your business is growing and it's not dying that way. That's how you'll have a predictable business. 
Also, it's it's about making ordinary people deliver an extraordinary experience. So you are going to hire an ordinary person 80% of the time. It's just the way it's going to be. The 80-20 rule is like gravity. Any, and most of us, if we do hire somebody, we do interviews. We interview two or three people and we hire one of them. Some of us maybe only interview one person and hire them because we just love them. They were awesome. What are the odds that you got the five percenter right there, then and there? I'm telling you, it doesn't happen. We've watched this through from the industry forever and ever and ever and the turnover. Um, the big teams, monster teams that are coming up all over the place. Anytime, it doesn't matter what company you're at, no matter what big team is built up, if you look at it, you're probably looking at everybody on the team is averaging one or two sales a month. And even the biggest, best teams might have somebody closing three deals a month and not somebody because you can have one person that might be closing seven, eight, 10, 20 deals a month. But if you have 10 people on your team and most of them are closing one or two a month, that's a people driven business, not a system driven business. So here's the why. And I'm going to try and keep this a little short, even though this is the hardest part to keep short of the whole thing. But I want to get to some meat on how you can really automate your business and franchise your business. But um, <clears throat> March 2015, my wife was in a car accident. Uh, this car right here was her Nissan Juke um, that you see right here had hit um, an SUV head on. What happened is she was coming up this entrance exit ramp and there was some conversation about whether or not she hit the guardrail and spun around. There is nothing wrong with this guardrail. This guardrail on this particular highway has got orange paint on it just about every day of the week. So something happened and I think she got clipped by a car coming off the exit ramp and she got spun around and took a head on collision. Now that's not the worst part of the story because she actually did survive. Um, what happened was that collision, that head on collision in that little tiny car pushed the dash back into her knees, which shoved her leg back through her hip socket and shattered her hips. The car did what it was supposed to do. It kept Sonia alive. However, she went through a 12 week recovery on um, this hip surgery. She it took 12 weeks off her no weight on her hips at all or on her legs at all for 10 or 12 weeks. So we went through that process and we got through the 12 weeks and she recovered and she got off the crutches um, and everything. Uh, let's see, that was in like June. Uh, she was off the crutches the first week of June. Um, on June 23rd, she just didn't wake up one day. She was in bed sleeping, totally recovered, two weeks off the crutches. We went and bought new cars. We did all this stuff. She was ready to get back to work and start driving again. And on June 23rd, she was sleeping, um, snoring, breathing. Everything was fine. She was just sleeping heavy and she had had trouble sleeping. She definitely had had some uh, insomnia from the accident, from the surgeries. And she, we had a nose surgery about two weeks prior to that. Um, right after she got off the crutches to see if that would help her sleep better. So she was sleeping real good on June 23rd. The problem was by 1030 in the morning, she had not woke up yet and she had not really moved. So when we tried to wake her up, um, we got no response. So she was just laying there sleeping and breathing. So we called 911 and they came in and got her stable and stabilized and got her into the ambulance to take her to the hospital, to see what was going on. Well, on the ride to the hospital, they lost her for four minutes and the ER lost her for another four minutes and they revived her both those times. But eight minutes without oxygen to her brain put Sonia into a coma. So um, what happened was um, it was another it was five months down the road, uh, November 4th, uh, before we realized we just weren't going to get Sonia back. And. Um, so the, the moral of this story, guys, is you got to get out of your comfort zone now. Here's why. And let me get to a better picture of uh, Sonia that you remember who, who this gal was and who we lost. I mean, she loved everybody and we nicknamed her smooches. But the, you got to get out of the, your comfort zone because when you're out of your comfort zone and you're implementing and working hard to build towards this business that you've envisioned, 
and you're putting things in place to grow your business and you're growing, you're feeding your database every day and you've got this predictable business, when bad things happen, it will suck you down to your comfortable zone if you're in your uncomfortable zone all the time. Now, I had great coaches and great mentors who pushed me out of my comfort zone all the time. In fact, they pushed me to write this course, Make the Phone Ring Again. And staying out of my comfort zone, that whole five months that I was in Lincoln, Nebraska with Sonia in a coma, had her at the best hospital I could have her at. Um, my house was my house was being paid for. My cars got paid. I never worried about you know, if we were going to close deals, we closed 97 transactions with two people on my team and I was gone. Guys, I want you to understand that the two people on my team is one admin person and a buyer's agent that I would hand off the buyer leads to that came in off of all of our marketing. I was still the listing guy and listings drove our business. Without the listings, the buyer's agent started to starve. So with our listings and with our marketing plan and our system that we had in place, we would get calls off every single listing instantly the minute the listing hit the market. And it was every listing all the time predictable. 400 leads alone came through just one source every single month that we got caller ID their number and called these buyers back. So the listings drove our business and we did 97 sales with me back one day a week for five months. That's how the book came about with Michael Gerber. All right, so let me jump in here so I can cover all the material. And again, this is just an overview of what we're going to do in the two day live version. Um, but it's where, where do I start and where do I get the business from? So the leads and sales opportunity, make sure um, our phone hasn't paused out. All right. We got some people on here. Woohoo! Okay. It looks like we're still going. There just might be a delay on my side, maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. I see. It's just because I'm not on the screen. On the Facebook Live, I was checking it out. So leads and sales opportunities, lead generation. In the book, E-Myth, we talk about the lead generation. Lead generation is always turned on. Top successful business people always lead generate constantly. And when I say lead generate, guys, I'm talking about business that you actually like to do. <laughs> okay, uh, lead generate is not just um, internet leads and talking to people that you don't want to talk to and all that stuff. It's about every single person you meet is going to be moving in the next five to seven years. So add everybody to your database and grow your business that way. What's your leverage opportunity? What gives you uh, the leverage marketing opportunities? We're going to talk about the systems that we put in place on our listings that happens every single time that generates leads off those listings. So now that's back to cold listings. You still want to have new leads coming into your business because once you master the relationship of every single person you meet, then every single lead that you get on the phone becomes a leverageable um, contact record that you build a relationship with them as well. And then you tap into their friends list. How can you control your time? We're going to talk about that in the two day event. And we talk about it and make the phone ring again as well. Uh, maximize your per hour compensation. So an agent gets paid on three things, bringing in new leads, converting those leads, meaning that they're signing a buyer's agency or they're signing a listing agreement. You are not getting compensated for showing somebody's houses and you haven't signed a buyer's agency agreement. You are not getting paid for sitting down at somebody's kitchen table, talking to them about how you can sell their house and they don't hire you to market your house. You get paid nothing for that. When a buyer goes out and buys a for sale by owner without you, you don't get paid for the time that you spent telling them how to do, how to buy the house, how to, how to get through the process and you maybe even showed them houses. So we're going to talk about all that stuff and where the systems actually become the leverage for you. That's where you start is getting the leads converted, capturing the leads, getting them converted and then delivering great service that will help you get to the point that you've got these systems in place that you can generate a great business that whether you're there or not, like I was in Lincoln, Nebraska for five months and closed 97 homes that year. Um, and keep in mind too, that the other two and a half months or three months of the year, we were with Sonia under, um, you know, getting through the accident stuff, the, the rehab. So a good contact management system could be like hiring a $50,000 a year assistant. And where the systems come in is creating a series of events 
that will happen in your database. And it's it, a series of events is a campaign or action plan. Write this down, campaign or action plan. Find that in your contact management system and set up a series of events that you want to see happen. I'm going to show you some of those today. What those some of those actual campaigns and action plans look like that are systems that run our business. What you do is you hit the start button and then you just do what your systems tell you to do. It doesn't sound very fun to be like told what to do. But I'm telling you what, my $50,000 a year assistant makes me $500,000 gross commissions every year, pretty much on autopilot. That And keep in mind here, too, I said I sold, sell 100 homes a year. I'm in the Midwest, Kansas City, where our average price point is more like about 140000 So I have to sell a lot of houses and I don't make a lot of income. $500,000 gross commissions a year on 100 sales. So I have to have systems in place to make this happen. And then one of the things that I talk about and where these systems come from and getting focused on what matters most and where the dollar productive activity is, here's another way to look at the 80-20 rule. 20% of the activities you did today generated 80% of your income. I know that says results, but think of income. What did you do to get paid for today? Because most real estate agents that are closing one or two or three deals a month and working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, man, they're not getting paid. They're, I mean, they're getting three results a month on three closings a month. That's not enough because they're 20 percent of the activities that they needed to focus on generated 80 percent of the results. So if you want to double your business this year, if you close two deals last month, if you want to do four deals next month, just do this 20 percent of whatever you did. If you track it and you know what it was that got those two deals, just do that twice as much, 40 percent of your time. And you'll close four deals every single time. You just have to know what your 20 percent is, which I said earlier, it's getting a new lead, converting that new lead or leverage, setting up a system that can free up your time to go get more leads and convert more leads. Eight, by the way, 80% of what you did yesterday generated 20% of your income, but you did it 80% of your day. So really let that one sit, sink in just for a second that do you have a business? So here's a flow of a building a business. Step one, many of you on this webinar today are probably at step one. You're doing everything. At step two, you might have some admin help to, to um, help you get some of the stuff off your plate that needs to get done and that admin -y stuff and the stuff you hate to do, right? So let's just give this person everything we hate to do. You know why there's turnover in admin roles? Because we give them everything we hate to do, which is not fun stuff to do. Uh, and again, so somebody can say, well, I find somebody who that is their fun stuff. Okay, well, that's one out of 100 will really love to do everything that you absolutely hate to do, right? And then what happens is the real estate agent and why most people get stuck right here at step two and don't move any further is because they just keep doing more of the 80% stuff that they like to do. 80% of what you did yesterday generated 20% of your income. Guys, if you want to raise, you got to get the 20% of what you need to do every day that generates 80% of your income and, and do it 20% of the day, and maybe some of us 40% of the day. There's only th two things that bring you income, converting a new lead that hires you as a listing or hires you as a buyer's agent. That's how you get paid. If they don't sign one of those two agreements, there's no money coming from the real estate transaction until those two things happen. So that 80, everything else is 80% stuff, right? So most people get stuck right here. They get an admin and they get a little busier and maybe they squeeze out, you know, an extra deal or two or they increase their business 5 percent or 10 percent or 15 percent. Very seldom do you hear of people that are doubling their business every year, tripling their business every year, unless they're quadrupling the amount of people that they hire. So some of the big teams, they might quadruple the number of people they work that work for them and they'll do double the amount of business. It's, it doesn't it doesn't correlate. Right because the systems aren't set up to help these people double and triple what they're already doing and help a new person come in and close four deals this month and close four deals next month and close four deals the following month, month after month after month, predictable, right? 
many people do not have their business quite that systematized. But step three is your marketing admin. So now you can start generating more leads and more business through the marketing, which you would have done this when you hired your admin person, right? Your admin person would have taken that 80% stuff off your plate. Marketing is capturing more leads. Now you can have somebody help you market your listings better, set up systems. The systems that I'm talking about today can be these, these leverage people in your business, even though they're not physical people. Uh, then you can have a, then you, you step four, you actually hire like a buyer's agent team. And let me show you how this all grows out too, because at step five, you hire a listing department and at step six, the business runs without you. But here's what so many agents do. They have kind of a pretty busy schedule and they feel like, you know, gosh, taking out buyers and showing them houses takes so much time. I'm going to hire a buyer's agent or they hire an admin person because they're super swamped on paperwork, but they only have three listing appointments all week long. Guys, if your schedule looks anything like this, now I'm out in a training class right here, but uh, just normal meetings that are going on or appointments, these green spots, these three green boxes are listing appointments. This was just an old calendar that I pulled up. But when I get to this point, now if I looked at most real estate agents who had a schedule that looked like this, they would think they needed some big monster team now to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten real estate related things going on, whether it was inspections, going on a listing appointment, showing houses, uh, whatever it was, showing more houses. There's still a lot of open space in this calendar. Now, I've got other stuff going on, but it's this is all 80 percent stuff. You see where I, this is coming in? See, until you would get to a point that you would actually start losing business because you have literally have 10 appointments every week. My goal is to be at three listing appointments every single day, five days a week. That's 15 listing appointments a week. That is 30 every two weeks. That's 60 every month. 60 listing appointments a month, or I should say 60 real estate appointments a month would now justify hiring some leverage into that sales team or that listing team. Until these white gaps are filled in, I can still plug more listing appointments in here and more buyer appointments in here. I don't need to hire that team yet. I need to keep hiring admin if I need to hire them at all and get those that 80% stuff off my plate. So that's kind of one of the things that we're gonna really dig deep in in the two-day event. All right, the Emith Real Estate Agent, back to just kind of highlighting a couple things uh, to help you really get a concept of what these systems look like in automating your business. We are going to cover the perfect process. Guys, the perfect process is one of the most genius things that I have come up with in my business career, and it is how I've created hundreds, hundreds of systems that automated my business. It's your perfect process. That is your business plan. So when you list the house until it gets a contract, what is that plan? From the time a buyer chooses to hire you and you start sending them properties and get them into a property and sell them a property, what happens? From contract to close, what happens? Guys, you've been to social media classes. It's like you need a social media calendar. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to create a calendar on keeping, you know, to do calendar to get things done. Guys, I mean, it doesn't work. The, the time blocking on the calendar never worked for me. I haven't met anybody where it has worked perfectly. In fact, they just get super slammed with life coming at them and issues popping up and problem solving and back into that technician role that you just erase and replace and so eventually you erase and don't replace. So what the perfect process is, it's documenting everything that you do every single day. If you have a team, I will show you how we will doc, have them document everything they do every single day. In fact, you're going to document everything that you think they're doing every single day. And then when you get their list of everything they do every single day, you can cross off the duplicates and you'll find out where your frustrations are. The things left on your list are the things that they didn't have on their list. Maybe they just didn't understand why it needed to be done. You know, when we create training programs for employees, they only hear 25% of what we're saying. 
Uh, if you go to a training class right now, you're only going to remember maybe 25% of what I'm saying by the time this webinar is over. You would need to watch this webinar 10 times to get more than 25% of what you really want to do out of, out of this system. So what we do is everybody documents everything they're doing for a week. And then we document what we think they're doing for a week. Then we get all those lists together from our entire team and we put every single action item on its own sticky note. This sounds crazy, but hang with me, guys, because what you're looking at here is this is the perfect process. That top row of sticky notes is from the time we list the house until it sells. The next line down is from the time uh, buyers goes under contract until it closes. We've got systems for every piece of our business um, from the time we list the house until it sells. It could be 14 days in that they get a letter that says, hey, you've been on the market 14 days. We should have already scheduled a one-on-one -on -one appointment to evaluate your marketing and, and get your feedback on everything and blah, 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 whatever your system may be. Here it was deliver booklets. I want to talk about this for a second because we would deliver brochures to our property and we put them in really nice, like the clear plastic covers with the slide bar cover. And we'd put together 10 of those so the buyers could pick these up and take them with us, with them. And it wasn't, it was a nice flyer of the house, but it wasn't just the seller's disclosure, boring. This was my top 10 favorite things about my house. My top 10 favorite things about my neighborhood. Um, the top 10 upgrades we've done inside the house, the top 10 upgrades we've done on the exterior of the house, uh, maybe school statistics. Uh, we already had the payment figured out for them at this price with 5, 10 and 20 percent down. What's your payment going to be? Because the buyers at the house, if they like the house, we need to show them your payment's only going to be eight hundred and fifty nine dollars a month. They're like, well, crud, we can afford eight hundred fifty nine dollars a month. We thought maybe one twenty was too high of a price. But if our payment's going to be eight fifty a month, that's what we want. Uh, we would have utility information in there because that's the things that buyers want. So we built, developed a packet that is a system that we pop this stuff in instantly, create the brochures, drop off 10 brochures at the house. So I would tell my clients that we're going to drop these booklets off at your house within three days because the showings our system for our showings started instantly. And every single listing that we list gets showings right away, instantly. Not sometimes, not, well, we'll see, well, whatever. It was predictable. We got showings every single time the minute we hit. So those brochures, I told my sellers they would show up in three days. Well, then they were getting mad saying, we've already had five showings and we don't have our brochures yet. That was like a common saying when we were developing these systems. So we had everybody document what they were doing. And my assistant said, well, I mean, I get the booklets out within a week or so. And I was like, oh, wait, we can't do that. Those have to be out within three days. And she said, well, that's impossible, Brad. We're too busy. We're closing 100 deals a year. These booklets are not our top priority every single day. It's the closings. And so we got to talk about that and we came up with five days. Well, easy solution. Now our system was within five days, you'll get your booklets. Everybody was on board with it. The assistant and the team knew when those booklets needed to be out there. Set up on a neighborhood alert so that they knew what was hitting the market. So you can see how we went through here. The 800 number was recorded on day zero. That thing was up and ready to go to capture leads. So then what we do is we create this perfect process and we and the team helps put everything in order. What's cool is you get to see who's doing what on each sticky note to see how they're all integrated as part of the process. Now, this system, you take all those sticky notes in the order that they were put up on the on the wall and when it needs to happen in our system. So these things that don't have a date just don't they're not time sensitive. This is our perfect buyer process. So our assistant has several things that she has to do. Oh, my phone's ringing. Decline. Hope that didn't kick off my video. Nope. It looks like it's still going live. Let me double check. I would hate to have lost you guys on the live video. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. We're still live. All right. So on this, when we took those sticky notes and put them into the spreadsheet with the days, However many people were on my team, whoever's name was on that sticky note that they were responsible for that goes in there. Now, you will see at this point, I had a pretty good team, pretty good sized team. And there's nothing 
on my checklist for anything to do with the perfect buyer process. However, and then it kind of goes through the whole process too. As you go down the list, you'll see that uh, I didn't have anything in there, but it takes that item and those people are responsible for it. This gave my team an instant job description of what they needed to do. Now, what happens is when somebody leaves, so the buyer's agent does all this buyer stuff and they walk out the door. Well, now we just get back together as a team and we move the X's over to whoever is going to do that piece of the business. These two were my admin. I didn't have another buyer's agent. These two left. We had an inside sales guy that had just left at the same time. So that left me to do all of the buyer stuff, which at that time, you just you got to do what you got to do. Right. It's not slam another person in there and expect them to know how to do all this stuff. Now I get to take, I just move the X's over and some of my admin team could help do some of this stuff, like sending out um, properties or making sure they were getting stuff or following up with feedback or whatever. So that's how it gives you instant job description. I'm telling you guys in the two days that you're with me in Kansas City, you will see that how simple this process is. We're going to go over that in detail because it gets you complete buy-in of your team. All right. So who? Who do you need to manage all this stuff? In chapter seven and eight in the EMIF Real Estate Agent, I'm going to talk about the management systems. So there are entire systems that are built even just to keep the team accountable. Accountability is the worst thing ever. Nobody wants to be held accountable. And if you think that you're going to just hire a whole bunch of people that want to come in and be on the phone cold calling strangers all day long and talking to them, talking them into meeting and going on appointments, you're fooling yourselves. It's not going to happen. There is one guy out of a thousand that loves to talk to strangers on the phone and can set appointments left and right. And a lot of times, if they are setting the appointments, the people were just trying to get the person off the phone. You guys know what I'm talking about? I mean, this is a people that's a people driven business. You need a system to convert them, to get them on the phone, to get them to answer the phone, to get them to soften up to you faster, to get them to want to meet with you. There's systems that come behind all that stuff to make that happen. So we create all these custom plans, not only your perfect process, but your, your self accountability plans. I mean, guys, if you're one agent right now, you're doing everything. The per how are you accountable to yourself to do the 20%, 40% of the day or 60% of the day if you need to triple your income? Because the systems actually hold you accountable. And when you're held accountable to the systems, then you know your team is going to be held accountable to the systems. And until you're accountable to your own systems, they never will be either. And you can't have somebody else come in and create these systems for you. The personal touch systems. I mean, I'm, we're talking about a touch system to talk to everybody on your team. Are you on purpose to stay connected with a team member? Not only your touch to your clients and your customers, but your pipeline conversion system, the people that work for you, all the people that are part of your team. What is your follow up process with them? So here's a sample of an action plan. Um, from uh, our new listing to contract or new listing offer plan for the first 90 days. So what happens here is the system actually uh, pauses out after 90 days because if we have a listing that goes 90 days, our client's probably freaking out. So we want that plan. I wanted my perfect plan to actually stop on the 90th day cause me to get in there and really look at what the heck is going on. Now I have stuff built in to do updates and all that stuff, but that even that puts it into high alert mode that in this current market, we wouldn't normally see 90 days. So if anything, they're probably ready to fire us because everybody at work is telling them they that we should have sold their house. Now along the way, we we're having our market updates with them. But if if somebody wasn't meeting and wasn't setting those appointments up and getting through, you know, avoiding us or for whatever reason, because somebody else told them they could sell their house and they were just trying to disappear on us. The plan stops, causes us to look at what's going on. So that's just uh, one. It's just all the stuff that happens. All of these things happen the day the listing comes back to the office. All these things happen within the first 24 hours and all these things happen within the first three days. 
so that everything's in place. And what's crazy is once it gets up and running, there's not a whole lot that happens from, you know, week one to week or day 30. But here's the cool part. When it's just you, step one, when you're doing everything, you can make sure everything gets done without being in reactive mode. I've always said that if you have to open up a file to see what's been missed and you have 10 files on your desk, you're going to always be reacting and be behind and dropping the ball and stuff. If the campaign in the system kicks out the item zero days after the listing and all I did was hit the start button and it told me, make sure the property's in MLS, send a copy of the MLS to the seller. I mean, how often does this happen automatically, really? Uh, for most real estate agents throughout the industry, I guarantee you, sellers do not get a copy of their MLS listing asking how they like it. Do they like the pictures? So that 90 days later, they come back and say, well, your MLS listing really is horrible anyway. You don't even have this and you don't even talk about that. So we send them a copy of this on day zero, the minute it goes live to see if they have any changes, additions, and we get them to respond by saying, no, this looks awesome. Then they can't throw that back in our face. That's a system, right? But as you get busy and you start booking your schedule, like we talked about earlier, and you start getting 10 or 15 appointments a week, now I can hire an admin person who takes all these things off my plate because this is 80% stuff. However, as an individual agent who's not closing more than two deals a month, I don't have the income to pay an admin person yet. So you have to do all that stuff. So now you can leverage yourself in there. And our system is set up that we have a dashboard every day that tells us what needs to be done. Look at this to-dos list, 191 to-dos. Now, I will tell you that about 100 of these are either just like clicking something on Facebook, do it, you know, checking the file to see if an inspection was done. There's a lot of to-dos in there, and this is closing 10 deals a month. If you're closing one deal a month, there's probably 20 to-dos a day. And that is, I mean, think about that, trying to have that on your to-do list every single day. 20 deals every day, 20 to-dos on your to-do list every day to close one or two deals a month. How do you even keep track of that stuff? We have 118 letters going out in the mail to follow up with clients. We don't use email a whole lot, but they, it doesn't show up here because they get sent automatically. I, I touch as few things as I can touch. There's 197 leads that came in that we haven't even gotten to all of them in this one, uh, but they're pouring in from the internet. So we're converting as many as we can, but we have 197 leads sitting there that, that are ready to be converted. All right, so how do you do all this stuff? So the campaigns and action plans in most databases allow you to create a series of events. So for example, here, the plan name is the buyer offered from the time they write the offer until it closes and it's closing in 60 days. So what has to happen on day zero from now to 60 days? Now, you know, most things close in 45 days. So we actually have all those plans. Listing continued 90 to 120 days. So after the 90 days, what do they do? Missed listing. Use the list date. So I start this plan on the date they listed with another realtor and it flags me at one month, three months, four months, five months, six months. And it tells me to check and see if it expired so that the day it expires, they get a call from me. New list to offer acceptance. All these different plans are in here. This is my dashboard that pops up. And it, I mean, these people here. We met them, some of these people we met five years ago, some people 10 years ago, some people yesterday. So they're all getting a different letter. It's not bulk mail. This is one-on-one -on -one relationship building. Here's a sample of a listing continued 60 to 90 days. They get a letter that's on the 61st day that says, thanks for sticking with us. And we've already plugged the hole on what questions that we know and issues they think they're having after 90 days or yeah after 90 days that we're getting that listing back under control we're making changes to the mls listing do they need more brochures all this stuff is going on and then we meet with them every two weeks from that point forward so those are campaigns that are running in the background guys we have i talked about accountability and i know i got about six minutes left so we're going to be right on time here I talked about accountability to yourself or your team. 
Here's accountability to converting better internet leads because you know you have to call them more than once or twice. You've already done that your whole career. You call a new internet lead, you try to get them on the phone, they don't answer. You try a couple more times, they don't answer. By tomorrow or the next day, you've got more new internet leads and you're trying to convert them and you're figuring, well, I don't want to pester that other person, so you quit calling them. Guys, I, we call them day one, day two, day three. We try to find them on social media. We call, make a third call five days later. We call a fourth time 11 days later. We do not let them off the hook. And in the meantime, we're sending them emails or finding them on social media to get them converted into a lead. So we make at least four or five attempts to get them on the phone and talk to them on social media somewhere so that we can get them in there. Now, that's times however many leads that come into your business every single week or every single month. Guys, there are teams that have a thousand leads coming in a month. We had a thousand internet leads come in in one year on a plan that I tried to use. I, I committed one year to buy these leads and see how many we could get converted. We had a thousand leads come in. We got a hundred of those leads into the database onto one of these plans and we got 24 of them closed. So out of a thousand leads, we closed 24 deals. So now that whole plan cost me $2,000 a month, $24,000 for the year. I closed 24 deals. So my buyer's agent made 50 grand off of those 24 deals. I made 25,000 off of those, those 24 deals. And I spent 24,000 on those 24 deals. So I spent 24,000 to make 24,000 or 25,000, whatever it was, they made 50 grand. Who was on the hook for it? And all I did was got my money back. That is scary business to me. So that's where these plans came from. And I told the team, I said, if we can get 75 people in the data or close and get 300 people in the database, I'll continue this plan next year. Because then I would have spent 24,000, but I would have made three times as much, right? Going from 24 closings to 75 closings, I would have made 75,000 spending 25,000. And my buyer's agent would have made uh, almost 100,000, right? Or I'd probably have two buyer's agents. So you can see how these systems help me track that. And basically what happened is we did 100 the second year and we closed around 25 deals and it was just, that was all the better it was gonna be. About a one to 2% conversion rate. It doesn't get any better than that if you don't get them into the database and connect with them. Uh, this is a lead accountability to feeding the database every single day, a lead reminder to put people into the database every single day. Now, I didn't pester them too much because I talked about it so heavily when they joined our team that I just sent a friendly reminder because I knew about every two or three days they would quit feeding the database because they'd get busy. So they actually got something like this that came in that says, if it's a past client, add them. If it's your sphere, add them. If it's a new lead, Boomtown lead, eEdge lead, these are all the different websites that we would capture people from. Here's a suspect or prospect lead that we didn't connect with. So they'll go at least on a 12 touch email system automatically. The minute they put this person into the system, these plans start. Uh, buyer and seller suspects and prospects, all that stuff. So these forms, when they got filled in, would automatically start the system. All right, so in the E-Myth Real Estate Agent in Chapter 9 and 10, we talk about people are your leverage, talent is overrated. So we, I really, there's a whole book written on talent is overrated. Guys, if you want talented people on your team then, and you want the really talented people that really push you and really help your business grow like double or triple, then you need to hire 100 people right now. Just go out and hire 100 people You'll be able to fire 80 of them fairly quickly. The 20 that's, that remain, you'll have to sift through to figure out who's just okay, uh, a, a good worker, and who's really talent, because only 5% of them are going to be considered talent. And then you replace that leverage time. When you hire people or put a system in place, you hire uh, that you get back into getting more leads or getting more listings converted. And remember the 80-20 rule. You're going to need to let 80% of your employees go. 20% will be good. Less than three will be extraordinary. 
All right, so uh, chapter 23 and 24, we talk about the Emith real estate agent work. You got it. You get to do what you like to do when you get these systems in place and you get to start leveraging yourself through people. You really do get to start doing more of the stuff that you like to do. However, you still have to keep Emith in there. You have to be the manager. You have to be the entrepreneur and you have to be the, well, eventually you don't have to be the technician anymore because you got your system, you got people running your your systems and your system is running your business, but it allows you to create other revenue streams or start your next business for your clients or, or like in real estate, find better, bigger opportunities like moving from just doing residential to maybe it's like multifamily or you move from people just buying or selling a house when they move with you to buying one extra or two extra, or three extra investment properties a year. That's how you get to start growing your business. And with systems, you can live your life and have your business inside of your life. So the systems will tell you what to do every single day. So you can go out and go to a football game or take off for the weekend and not have to think about business 24 seven. There's a system running, right? Chapter 25 and 26, we talk about taking action. So this is, you know, how do you do all this? So I, I will invite you to send me an email to brad at cornteam.com, K-O-R-N-T-E-A-M. See the bottom logo there, brad at cornteam.com, and ask me to send you the top five action items and the top three. You can watch this webinar again, and if you just wrote down all your best ideas on this form here, the top five action items, and if you wrote down 10, if you highlighted 10 things in your notes, Write down all 10 on this top five action sheet on two pieces of paper. Grab the first three that are, you can do right now. What are you going to do? When are you going to implement it by? And who do you need to help get it done? And get really focused on this here. Guys, this is how I started implementing things in my business. So we're right at the top of the hour. I'm going to close it out here. So this is time blocking to work on your business. Time blocking, I said earlier, did not work for me. Um, these here are actual people appointments. Now, this is a business when whether I have eight people on my team and believe me, we had times where it was one or two people in our business and we were closing 100 deals a year. If there's one or two people in my business, this schedule can look a little crazy. Can you see why if I didn't have in those early days that working on my business to set up these systems? how I would have ever been able to handle this. And I wouldn't have done anything this week to grow my business. I would have just been doing business. And without having that work on time in your calendar, permanently marked and it cannot be removed, you're gonna be caught up in the whirlwind and the tornado of just everyday business. I'm gonna leave you with one other thing, is that be careful who has access to your database. This is something I have seen people come up with in all, all my years of real estate. I'm gonna hire somebody to clean up my database, clean up my database. Guys, your database is a gold mine. Think of it as the bank vault. Every little contact record is a stack of money in there. So you have to be careful who you let in your database. That's the one thing that you should not give up right away. And I'll stand behind that one till my, to my grave because the way our system is set up, when other people are shoving things into the database, it's coming in, with no caps, misspelled words. The email is uh, .co or .con instead of M. You need to touch your database and make sure all the information that's coming in